Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for the break, we were looking at, uh, uh, we were studying that the Holy Spirit is a, is a person. And because he's a person, he has a personality. So why are we studying that he has a personality? Why is it important for us to know all of these things about the Holy Spirit? Yes, it helps us to relate to him. Many people don't relate to the Holy Spirit because they don't know what he does. So I'm, 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 I, I will say this, that even as you st study about the Holy Spirit, you will come to know like, oh, wow, the Holy Spirit does so many things in my life. He's there to do so many things. And I really did not understand or know. So I came from a background where, you know, um, Holy Spirit was not taught to us, only father and son. So when the church background I came from, you know, uh, no Holy Spirit. They only spoke about the Holy Spirit as Holy Ghost. And so I only thought that the Holy Spirit was ghost. I didn't know that Holy Spirit was God. And uh, I also only knew God the Father and God the Son. And I only related to both of them. And when I went to Bible college, we also did not study about the Holy Spirit, very sadly. I studied in an evangelical college, but there was no teaching about the Holy Spirit. Okay, And so I did absolutely knew nothing about the Holy Spirit. And I used to go to a church where they used to call me to minister in their family camps to children. And they used to have this baptism of the Holy Spirit and all of that. And I used to literally run away from them when they used to say they want to lay hands and pray for me because I was very scared because all of the things that they were manifesting and, you know, which was not something that I was accustomed to, I related to or understood to. Okay, or, or, or I understood. So only when I came to APC, when I joined APC, that is in 2008, that is when I got to study and learn about the Holy Spirit. Okay, so when I learned about the work, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit is like, wow, I didn't know all of these things. I missed out on so much. Okay, so I think some of you are here who are very young, are very privileged to learn about the Holy Spirit so young and so early compared to me who you know, came to know in much later years of my life. But, you know, you just uh, it get it, just soak up yourself in your study about the Holy Spirit and just tap into the Holy Spirit, all that he does, and you will just experience the Holy Spirit in such a powerful way. So we saw that the Holy Spirit, thank you online students, I like your enthusiasm. Um, so we, um, we studied in um, the first part of this, um, um, the first hour, we studied that the Holy Spirit has a mind, okay? He knows the truth, he reveals the truth, he is the truth, and he also has, um, you know, he also helps us in our weakness, okay? Now, the third thing we will look at is the Holy Spirit teaches us and reminds us isn't that wonderful that the holy spirit is your teacher and he reminds you about the truth right so for example uh, how do we relate to this aspect of the holy spirit that the holy spirit teaches us and reminds us how can we relate to this truth come on can we have some answers i'm not asking you some deep theological question i'm asking you some something practical how can we relate to this aspect of the Holy Spirit as a teacher and somebody who reminds us? He'll yeah. remind the Bible verse, the words of God. Okay. Yes, we read the Bible. We listen to sermons. Okay. Sometimes some of the Bible passages really impact us. And then it's, it's there in our minds. But when we go through some situations, you know, the Holy Spirit can... Give that as an answer, okay? I've known in my own life when I was praying for situations, praying uh, for God's answer, God's intervention in some circumstances, in some situations of my life, God has spoken to me or given me the answer through a scripture verse, okay? So that is the Holy Spirit reminding us. How is the Holy Spirit our teacher? How is the Holy Spirit our teacher? 
He teaches us how to stay connected with God, okay? He warns us. He, he warns us, okay? How does he teach us? Helper, okay? He is the helpers to know the plans of God and he guides us through the path which we walk. Uh, so did you say he uh, he reveals to us the plans of God and he invites us to fulfill the plans of God? That is what you're saying, Sriraj? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. He reveals God's will, reveals God's plan for us. He teaches us what is the right way to go. Yes. What is the way of truth? What is the way of righteousness? Okay, God wants us to be righteous. Okay, his kingdom is righteousness, joy and peace. So the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us about words of god yeah the words of god as well what else when you're reading your bible okay some of us some of us can do it as a ritual okay just read something hey i finished my ritual my my responsibility right so it's not just that when we find something difficult in the bible to understand the holy spirit is our teacher he comes alongside us he teaches us he helps us to understand he reveals the truth about god reveals what that verse is really talking to you so next time when you're reading the holy the uh, reading your bible you can say holy spirit even as i'm reading god's word teach me reveal the truth to me and let the truth set me free okay so the holy spirit is our teacher he reminds us so let's look at some scripture references here can somebody please read john chapter 14 verse 26 someone else can turn to nehemiah in the old testament nehemiah chapter 9 verse 20. so can you pass the mic to the ladies please we can hear some ladies voices they can read uh, john chapter 14 we can keep one mic for the men and one for the ladies john chapter 14 verse 26 Online students, even you can feel free to unmute your mics and read. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Amen. So here Jesus is assuring his disciples. He's telling his disciples, you know, don't be sad. Don't be disappointed that I'm leaving you and going because there's somebody who's coming after me and that is the... Holy Spirit, and what is he going to do? Just like I was teaching you, he will also teach you all things, and he will also bring to remembrance everything that I have taught you or told you. Okay, it's good for all of you to turn into your Bibles, look at your notes, or if you're just looking at space, you're going to feel sleepy, dull, and bored. Okay, so good to take down notes, good to look at your uh, notes as well, and look at your Bibles. Someone, can you please read Nehemiah? Chapter 9, verse 20, please. Nehemiah 9, 20. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them. And did not continue reading? Okay, you did not withhold your manna from their mouth, and you gave them water for their thirst. So here Nehemiah is talking about when the Israelites were journeying in the wilderness, and what was the Holy Spirit doing? instructing them yes instructing them guiding them teaching them okay so the holy spirit teaches you instructs you corrects you you know trains you in righteousness and holiness but some of you are saying hey the holy spirit is not teaching me the holy spirit doesn't seem to instruct me the holy spirit doesn't seem to correct me why does that happen when you're not listening yes when you ignore him, yes, when you don't know that he is the one who is your teacher and he is the one who corrects you and reminds you, what else? Sorry? Not spending time with the Holy Spirit, not fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, yes. Also, overconfidence, yes, thank you. Sometimes we can also be those vessels that are unyielded. Having that stubborn, arrogant, and disobedient spirits. 
and we're not submitting our wills and aligning our wills to God's will, then the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He doesn't push us, right? He just allows us till we learn and we come back to him and ask him. But he does teach us, he does correct us if you're willing to listen to him. Look at what also the Holy Spirit does. He testifies to us. What does he testify about? Uh, can somebody please read John chapter 15, verse 26? Can you take that, give that mic to pass it on to the other ladies, please? John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, whom shall whom I shall send to you from the Father? The spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Amen. So who is the helper here? How do we know the helper here is Holy Spirit? Look at the, it's a capital H, helper. Okay. And also we know that the Holy, Jesus says that the helper will come. Okay. Whom I shall send from the Father, the spirit of truth. And what will he do? Testify of me, okay? So the Holy Spirit, you know, um, testifies about who Jesus is. He, oh, the Holy Spirit also testifies to you that you are children of God, that you're sons and daughters of God. The Holy Spirit also testifies what and all you have received as a result of salvation. He testifies the truth to you. He testifies who God is. He testifies who you are in Christ, all of that he will testify, okay? So we see that because he's somebody who testifies, it means that he has to have an intellect or he has to have a mind. And hence we are saying that the Holy Spirit is a person. He has a personality. Look at also what the Holy Spirit does in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. Can somebody else read that please? John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. John chapter 16, 13 to 15. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I say the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Amen. So what is the Holy Spirit going to guide you in? What is the Holy Spirit going to guide you in? All the truth right? He's going to guide you into all truth, truth how you're going to live your lives, truth of what you, how to perceive things, see things, understand things, okay? And so he's going to guide you into all truth. So you can ask the Holy Spirit every day and say, Holy Spirit, you are the truth, guide me into all truth, guide me what I need to do in this situation. You know, I am caught in the situation. I have to speak the truth. Guide me. What is the truth of the situation? How can I understand things? Okay. We also see that the Holy Spirit has a will because he's a person. He has a will. So can somebody please read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 11. Someone else can read John chapter 15 verse 26. And someone else can read Acts 13 verses 1 to 4. Just keep pressing it, yeah. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So who is the, it says there that, but one and the same Spirit, you know, distributes to each one individually as he wills. What is he going to distribute? The gifts of the Spirit. So all of us can flow in the nine gifts of the Spirit, like I said last class, but based on different situations, when you are ministering to different people in different situations, the Holy Spirit knows what is the best gift that is needed for that person in that situation. Okay? So suppose you're praying for somebody who's very sick. Okay? So what is the best gifts? Gifts of healing, gifts of miracle, gifts of faith. Okay, so that time if you give him a prophecy, will it help him? Not really, right? Because he's looking for healing, right? So 
in uh, for a person who has no job for many years or something is not happening in their life what is the best gift word of knowledge word of wisdom word of prophecy right if you give him a healing word of healing will that help no he is looking for a breakthrough right so the holy spirit knows what is the best gift for that best situation the person you're praying to and ministering to so as he wills he will release the best gift okay what as john chapter 15 so when you're praying for somebody you can say holy spirit reveal the you have a will reveal to me what is the best gifts for this specific occasion or for this specific person can somebody read john chapter 15 verse 26 please but when but when the helper comes whom i will send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will be a witness about me yeah he will testify of me that means here we know that the holy spirit also testifies he also has a will and he will testify according to that okay uh, can somebody else read acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 4 can you pass the mic to this side please you can have some of them read from this side acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 4 Acts thirteen one to four. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers: Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had who had been brought up with Herod and Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, Tetrarch and Saul. as they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy spirit said now separate to me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them then mm-hmm. having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them they sent them away was four so being sent out by the holy spirit they went down to celsia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Cyprus. Okay, thank you. So here we see that you know when when Jesus Christ went back to heaven, who did he place in charge of the church? The Holy Spirit. Okay, and we see that the Holy Spirit has his own will, his own mind. He makes his own decisions. He uh, has uh, responsibilities on the earth. So here we see an example. Okay, the church at Antioch. There were prophets and there were teachers, and there were what were they doing? It was fasting and prayer, like you're having fasting and prayer today. So it's a fasting and prayer for them. And what what happens? The Holy Spirit says, "Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them." So the Holy Spirit reveals that Barnabas and Saul have to be set apart for the work that has been. they have been called to and so they were they were sent out to seleucia and they sailed to cyprus because the holy spirit led them so the holy spirit also will lead us and guide us okay in the church the holy spirit will also guide the elders and leaders and tell them who they have to set apart for which work who is appointed for which work who is supposed to do which work so we are seeing here that the holy spirit has a will so you can pray and say god holy spirit reveal the will of god to me or reveal the will of the father to me and the or reveal the will for your what will you have in this situation of my life reveal it to me okay we also see that the holy spirit has emotions right because the holy spirit is a person he will also have emotions okay so we look at some of the emotions that are mentioned in the gospel can uh, someone please read romans chapter 15 was 30 ephesians chapter 4 was 30 and uh, isaiah chapter 63 was 10 you can pass the mic to this side also they can read please romans 15 30 now i beg you brethren through the lord jesus christ and through the love of the spirit that you strive together with me in prayers to god for me yes so it says through the love of the spirit can the holy spirit love 
Yes, the Holy Spirit can love. The Holy Spirit can fill us with, he's a spirit of love. He can fill us with love. Okay, so you can, if you are somebody who's not a loving person, you're finding it difficult to love your spouse, difficult, finding it difficult to love your mother-in-law, your in-laws, finding it difficult to love somebody in your family, you're finding it difficult to love somebody in the Bible college or in your workplace, you can say, Holy Spirit, you're the spirit of love. Fill my heart with your love. Okay. The Holy Spirit can also be grieved. What is the meaning of grieved? The Holy Spirit can also be grieved means what? The Holy Spirit can also be hurt. You can hurt the Holy Spirit by the way you're living your life, the things that you're watching, the things that you're saying, the way that you're behaving, your attitudes. Because when you're born again, who is living inside you? The Holy Spirit dwells in you. And when you do some things that are sinful, when you're watching things that are sinful, speaking things that are dirty and filthy, and uh, speaking words that are not right, thinking thoughts that are not pure, having thoughts of jealousy and hatred and pride, all of those things can basically hurt the Holy Spirit. He can be upset. He can be distressed. He can be depressed. Okay? He won't be depressed because he's God. <laughs> Sorry. But you basically can hurt the Holy Spirit. You can, uh, you know, you can cause him so much of hurt and displeasure. Okay, so the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Can somebody read that, please? Ephesians 4, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. 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 So it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. That means, what does it mean? Do not hurt the Holy Spirit of God. God. Okay, don't cause him hurt. Don't make him upset. And you know the way that and the things that you have done to hurt the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. Yeah. So here we see when we rebel against God, what's the meaning of rebellion? When do we rebel against God? When you're stubborn? When we do what we desire, our carnal nature is crying out, fleshly nature is crying out, what we desire, what we are passionate about, you know, when we disobey Him, when we are not yielded to Him, submit to Him, we grieve the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the times that are when the Holy Spirit can, can be grieved uh, and we can cause Him a lot of pain, and, you know, the Holy Spirit has the ability to communicate the feelings in our heart. The Holy Spirit can communicate to us and say, hey, what you're doing is not right. What you're seeing is not right. What you're watching is not right. How you're living is not right. Your attitude is not right. Your mindset is not right. Okay. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't torment him. Don't cause sorrow. Don't insult him. Don't cause him any pain. Okay, so just a warning for us, okay, that we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. We are told in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 says, do not give place to the devil. Okay, um, so do not give place to the devil in your life. Verse 28, it says, do not take, do not take what is not yours. Those who are stealing should not steal any longer but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give who has in need. Okay, so that is something that we need to do. Do not take what is not yours. Do not give the devil a foothold. When you give the devil a foothold, you grieve, you insult the Holy Spirit. Do not take what is yours. When you do that, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. Don't in engage in corrupt communication. Look at uh, the same chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Can somebody read that, please? Ephesians 4, 29. Let no communi corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, 
that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Amen. So it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and necessary for edification. That means what builds others up, what strengthens others up so that you might, you might impart grace to the hearers. So if you have done things like this, you've given a place to the devil, there are hard attitudes that you have, there are things that you have, you know, unconquered weaknesses, stubbornness, unyieldedness, disobedience. You've grieved the Holy Spirit who is living in you. Right? You know what you are doing. You know your lifestyle. You know your attitudes. Okay? You know how you have broken the heart of God, the way that you are living. Okay? It also says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, clamor, you know, uh, speaking evil, put away all of these things, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just even as God in Christ forgave you, okay? So maybe if some of you have grieved the Holy Spirit, you know, I just want us to pause for a word of prayer, okay? I know this is a class and this is not like a preaching session, but I think this is important. Okay, so let's just all close our eyes. Don't go to sleep, please. Just close your eyes, everyone. Okay, so even as you're closing your eyes, I want you to think about your own lives. I believe that all of you here are here because you are born again. You've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But you have, we all have grieved the Holy Spirit. Look into your own life. Say, Holy Spirit, I have grieved you. Maybe consciously, unconsciously. What are some of your heart attitudes? Maybe it's a rebellious spirit, an arrogant spirit, disobedient spirit, unyielded spirit. Maybe a spirit of corruption, unclean, foul spirit. Maybe you're in Bible college, but yet the things that you're watching, the things that you're speaking, the things that are in your mind, there's filth and uncleanliness. Maybe the way you look at others, the way you treat others, there's just no gentleness, there's no love, there's no compassion, there's no um, patience. You can say, Holy Spirit, I've grieved you, I've hurt you, I've insulted you. Change me. Forgive me. You're the spirit of truth. You're the spirit of holiness. So you can say, Holy Spirit, come reign in me. Sanctify me. Cleanse me. Set me apart for truth and holiness. Some of you have the spirit of lies. You're constantly speaking lies. Some of you have the spirit of anger, of jealousy, of pride, of bitterness, anger. Say, Holy Spirit, all of these things have grieved your heart, has broken your heart. And I'm asking you for forgiveness. Cleanse me and wash me. Purify me. You are the refiner's fire. Make me holy so that I can be that holy vessel fit for you, you to pour out your anointing upon me, to be used by you mightily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, just a few more points. Um, we look at it quickly and then we'll end. Okay. The Holy Spirit, does he speak? Yes or no? Yes. And because he speaks, he's a person. Okay, so we're not going to look at all of those references because we know the numerous references where we see the Holy Spirit speaks. Um, uh, we can also see that the Holy Spirit can be uh, insulted. Okay. Um, look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. Very powerful verse. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. A very powerful verse. I want all of you to please turn in your Bibles. To Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. And can somebody read that loud and clear, please? Yes. 
Yes, who's reading that? Loud and clear? Go ahead, dear. Uh, you can read it. Yeah. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose? Will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? Amen. So here it's basically saying that, you know, when you have tasted about the goodness of God, when you have tasted salvation, when you've experienced salvation, and when you, you know, treat that as an unworthy thing by living lifestyles that are sinful, it says you, it's basically you are trampling the Son of God under your foot. That means you're trampling the covenant that God has made on the cross the blood covenant that Jesus made on the cross, you are trampling it under the foot. That means, what do you trample under foot? Something that is not needed, something that is unworthy, right? So that is how you, you, you are reacting, or that is how you are acting when you are saying, hey, I'm born again, but you are living in willful sin. It's not only sin of murder or adultery, it can be even sin of pride, arrogance, disobedience, jealousy, bitterness. When you do all of these things, you are basically trampling the Son of God underfoot and you are looking at the blood of the covenant as something that is a common thing, something that is an unworthy thing. And that time you are insulting the Spirit of grace. The Holy Spirit is also called as a Spirit of grace. So grace is given to us. We do not merit salvation do not deserve salvation, but it's given to us. It's God's favor over our lives, okay? And it says here that you are insulting the spirit of grace, okay? So be very careful when you're saying that, hey, I'm born again, but you're living in willful sin is you are treating the blood of the covenant which Jesus established on the cross as a unworthy thing and you'll be trampling that under your feet and you are insulting the spirit of grace okay and we can also see that you know we can um, hurt the spirit of god or insult the spirit of god when we lie ananias and Sapphira, was it a major lie that they said no if you look at it it's they just get part of their own you know, what they sold. It was their property. Nobody asked them to sell it. It was not going to harm anyone if they're giving part of their, this one. But even that lie was a lie before God, which was such a great thing that caused their downfall and death. So sometimes we think it's okay to lie, right? Good lie, bad lie. For God, there is no good lie, bad lie. There is no white, there is no gray. There is only white and black. A lie is a lie for God. So you can't say, hey, I told a lie to save somebody. A lie is a lie before God. Okay. So when you lie to God, you're basically insulting the Holy Spirit. Okay. I think we'll stop here. All of you are um, it's going way beyond your head. Okay. We'll stop here. Any questions? Online students, in-person students, any questions? Any questions you all have? First class, you all had so many questions and doubts. No questions and doubts? Based on what we studied? Online students, you all have any questions and doubts? I think it's not a good thing to study uh, the person and work of the Holy Spirit on a Friday when everyone's stomach is empty, <laughs> right? Stomachs are growling, mind is not able to concentrate. Okay, no questions. Okay, there are no questions. We'll um, I'll just give you this time. Um, Charles is saying Abraham and Isaac lied. So you're saying did they grieve the Holy Spirit? Good question. So there is an online student who is asking a question. 
uh, like all of you to uh, help in answering this question okay says that abraham and isaac lied abraham lied when did abraham lie when he told the, the king of egypt that this is not his wife it is his sister and when isaac also lied uh, lied and took his uh, uh, birthright blessing okay so did they grieve the holy spirit did they insult the holy spirit what is your answer yes please take the mic and give him the mic please so uh it is in old testament i think there uh the holy spirit was given in the new testament after jesus christ was resurrected he told the disciples to wait for the power of uh, holy spirit in jerusalem so i think uh what was the question is abraham and uh, isaac have lied that is uh i think many people lied in old testament so it's not against the holy spirit okay so that time holy spirit is not given okay but yes the spirit of man is there it it was against god even adam did the same thing he also not obeyed god so god moved away okay good try thank you anyone else anyone else uh, one more point yes uh, like the same way in uh, genesis uh, the nurses of uh, extension lagana padega aapko sorry anyone is speaking uh, see raj can you please mute your mic thank you yeah sorry yeah, you can so, go ahead so uh, that king of erod was uh, announced to kill all the male child uh, when jesus was born that some nurses in the uh, they lied they said uh, like uh, they will not kill the uh, male child and they lied uh, like uh, yes. this yeah hebrew ladies were so strong uh, in nature yes. so they give before we go there they give birth to the childs okay. so that time erod was ang anger on them but god helped the nurses so it's not like uh, a white a black lie or white lie it is it is a bad lie like that so the nurses helped uh, uh, that uh, hebrew ladies so god uh, uh, see them. favors on them yeah yes bless them okay so when we look at uh, do you want to say something you have the mic with you okay so um, what we understand here is why was that lied in uh, when uh, when ananias and sapphira lied why were they struck down dead and why was abraham and when isaac lied why were they not struck down dead but they received blessings now yeah we know you want to say um, something it's it's just a thought that uh, you know uh, when we speak of the holy uh, grieving the holy spirit mm. uh, it's mainly talking about the sin against god mm. uh, like holy spirit is telling not to do some things in our hearts mm. uh, which is um, this is not aligning to god's word so don't do this okay. and when we still do that so that is when holy spirit is uh, grieved okay. and even in uh, in case of ananias and sapphira um pas also was preaching on that and he said that they might be having a thought saying that okay if we say we have given everything we will have a, a good name among the apostles and we will uh, be promoted or rewarded or recognized for whatever we did and that grieved the holy spirit so you uh, like you don't need human approval you don't need to please uh, humans so even if they had told this is this is the thing like only this much uh, we we sold it but this is what we are willing to give we do have uh, other things so if they had told i think that wouldn't have grieved the holy spirit and in terms of abraham and um, isaac yes. they both did the same thing they lied about their wife being their sisters uh, 
technically they were their sisters uh, yes abraham's technically sarah so was abraham's technically sister. yeah so in those cultures like uh, we see that happening even now but in, isaac uh, lying that for his yeah, birth yeah. Right? laban yes. no 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 isaac also lied about his wife okay rebecca okay, okay. and laban was his uncle so mm -hmm. in our case mama's daughter okay so he married his mama's daughter but in abraham's case it was technically his sister so but he covered that uh, she was his um, wife uh, in order to save himself there and uh, we don't see uh, text in the text we don't see anything uh, pertaining to did he uh, did the holy spirit say no or yes so if in order to discuss what is not there uh, i think that also puts us in a okay. bad place thank you both for sharing your views actually the one i was talking about was jacob i thank you for correcting me it's isaac so what we understand here why was when abraham and isaac lied okay like he's saying yes they were technically yes in the uh, abraham's wife was like his sister but he eventually lied in that in that situation now how does god look at it now in the old testament they had very limited revelation of who god is they worked in that revelation of god and god will judge them based on the revelation they have received and known okay but in the new testament why was ananias and sapphira uh, struck down dead just for a simple lie is because greater the glory greater the manifestation greater the revelations of god greater the accountability so you and i today are not struck down when we are living lives that are sinful but there is a greater accountability because we are living in a time where we have greater revelation we're able to understand the greater revelation is truth from what happened the old testament to the recent now we have received revelation and truth and we are receiving all of those things and we are learning it so we're in a period of greater revelations greater truth and when there's period of great glory of god when it's manifested there is no zero tolerance for sin i'll tell you that again in the early church there was a great manifestation of the glory of god when there's a great manifestation Sorry. When there's a great manifestation of the glory of God, there is zero tolerance to sin. For example, Israelites, when they were walking in the desert, they had already received great manifestation of the glory of God. Glory of God means who God is, what he does. Okay. They saw great mighty miracles, the ten plagues, they saw the uh, the Red Sea parted, but yet they were stubborn, they were disobedient. All of you listening, they're stubborn and disobedient. And what was happening every time they were stubborn and disobedient, there was the wrath of God that comes in a very severe way. We can say, why was the wrath of God so severe? It was because greater the glory that is manifested of God, zero the tolerance abraham and isaac was not justified that lie is not justified in the same way we are living as the in the church period where we have a greater glory of god manifested our covenant that we have received is greater than the old testament so remember this that whatever you and i do the judgment is greater we will we will we will receive greater judgment than all those who have gone before us. So we are living in a period of great grace, yes, great glory, yes, but there will be also great, greater punishment. So we need to be mindful of that. Okay. So I hope I answered your question, Charles. Okay. Um, Pooja's question is about Son of God, which is not what we are talking about. So Pooja, I'm going to uh, post this in the chat section and if I have time then I would uh, answer your question but I will uh, post your question in the chat section so you can read it up. Shubham says when one God can do all things why the need for three personalities? Exactly. You know one God can do everything for him he doesn't need. He's God right? He doesn't need 
it is how we are able see the whole thing about trinity the whole thing about godhead is not for god it is for us because we are trying to perceive god we are trying to understand god so god for god to help us understand him he relates to us in three different persons and even though there are three different persons they work in perfect unity they are one so please remember that even though there are three different personalities they are one they function in perfect oneness and unity there's no confusion in the, among the godhead who's going to do this you didn't do this why you didn't do this there is no strife and fight and he is god he can do all things that is why he is omnipotent but for us to understand perceive god is how he relates to us okay um yes 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 go ahead uh, pastor uh, can we also say that um if god comes in his full glory mm -hmm. like we won't exist like we can't see the full glory of god yeah that is what he says in uh, in timothy right yeah. um god lives in unapproachable light who no man has seen or can ever yeah. see and because of that only he functions in this manner like holy spirit and son of god you know like god the father god the son god the holy spirit down his glory for us like we can't approach and he if he shows himself in his full glory we can't exist we we'll, cannot perceive and understand yeah. who god is okay? so that is why he functions in this manner like tempering down his glory for our sake can we tempering say that down is it, his glory uh, meaning in jesus's case he left his glory mm -hmm. and he came down yes he took on the sonship glory yeah. and he revealed to us the father heart of god yeah, yes. even in in case of holy spirit uh god cannot come in uh, not cannot like mm. god is a spirit of god in his full glory we can't exist yes. so that is why he comes in the form of holy spirit uh, a gentle spirit so that you know but the holy spirit is also god he has all the attributes yes, and nature yes, of yes, god yes. Yes, yes yes so he comes down in a gentle spirit and then he functions. it's how you understand and perceive him no, but I'm really just, uh, yeah i'm just i'm thinking. just trying to like okay. can we think this way i'm asking yeah i think it's okay it's nothing that is theologically digressing or is wrong yes he basically uh, relates to us in the three persons which we can understand yeah okay saubhagya says when holy spirit we are in your presence song can we sing that song during our worship time as we know the holy spirit is already with us and one more question yeah we can sing that song we can welcome the presence of holy spirit we are just we are just uh, saying that hey we are acknowledging your presence holy spirit yes um as a worship leader mm -hmm. um i sing that song welcome holy welcome spirit welcome holy spirit because my uh, thought process behind that song is um when someone comes to a house they are already inside our house they are already they have already come but still we get up and say come 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 hey i'm so happy to see you come come they are already there yeah but why why is that you are telling come like you know hey come come hey nice to see you why are you doing that you are happy you are welcoming them yeah. same way holy spirit is already there and you are happy that he is there and you are welcoming him come yeah you're there i'm happy you no know, yeah. welcome yeah so that's the thought process i have behind right. when i sing the welcome holy spirit thank you vine we basically acknowledging his presence we just basically acknowledging welcoming him and asking him when you're welcoming welcoming him we are basically asking him to take over and to do what he does best what he wants to do best so when is welcoming the holy spirit we're not saying okay you are somewhere out we are welcoming you we are basically saying we are welcoming you in our midst to do what you want to do so you are saying holy spirit we give you the rightful ownership take over you do what you want to do you work in the ways that you want to do you manifest yourself you heal you deliver you restore whatever so that is uh, uh, does that help saubhagya oh my god so many questions good okay uh,
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take uh, Joanne's question and uh, Adimi's question and maybe look at it and then post it in the classroom page. Is that fine? And also uh, Pooja's question because it's time up. Uh, the the in-person students have their supernatural R now. So I will take your questions up and I'll post it in the uh, classroom page. Is that fine? Joanne and uh, Adi Abidimi. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining class. Next week onwards, Pastor Paul will take your class. Thank you.